Well, it's Friday, folks, and you know what that means. It's time for another Tech Help Quick Queries video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Everyone's excited. I'm excited. Are you excited? I know this kid's excited. I love this clip. I just, every time I see it, I laugh. I just, they get so pumped. I love it. <laughs> First off, I got an email from a student of mine, Sam, who said he just bought a new laptop from Dell and he made sure to add on Microsoft Office 2024 only to be shocked that it no longer included access. Now, even with the older versions of Office, you used to have to make sure you got the professional version. There used to be like an Office 2021 Pro, right? Uh, and that included access. The, the, the standard version has never included access. However, just recently with this version, Microsoft changed it so that no versions of Microsoft Office include access if you're doing the perpetual license, right? Where you buy the, the specific version, 2024, 2021, 20, you know, that, that's called the perpetual version, as opposed to the subscription model. I personally like the subscription model, the Microsoft 365 model. You know, you get one set price every year, you know, you're paying it for the software, you get all the updates, you get all the new features. But I know some businesses prefer the perpetual version because they might have that version for 10 years or whatever. And there's no problem with that. So just know that if you're looking to buy access, you got two options. You can either do a subscription model that includes it. Like I have the Microsoft 365 apps for business. That's like 825 a month. It's not bad at all. Or you have to buy the standalone Microsoft Access 2024. It doesn't come as part of Office anymore. I know this is confusing. Microsoft loves to confuse people with all their different subscriptions and product variations. And uh, yeah, th they've been confusing people for years. I love, 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 love Microsoft, but they got to do something to make this easier for everybody. Anyways, I got a whole separate video on this coming out next week. It, it may already be available by the time you see this. It's scheduled for release on February 13th, but I go into much more detail with all the different options, you know, what versions include what and where and this and that and all that. So if you're confused, watch this video. Members, it's online. You can watch it right now. Next up on the list in the forums on my website, one of my students, Jeff, is making his own software that he wants to release to other people. And he's distributing it as an ACCDE file, which is smart. It's encrypted. It's locked up. Good for you. But his question is he wants to know once his students or once his customers already have the database installed, and they've been working with it, they got data in it, how does he then distribute updates so that they get the newest version of the, basically the database program without affecting their data? So of course we went back and forth and asked some questions and talked about it and blah, 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 blah. And basically it came down to it after I figured out exactly what he was doing. You got two options in this case. You can, and this is what I recommend, you can split the database. This way you only have to replace your front end file and they can keep their back end file. Unless, of course, you make changes to the table structures, in which case you'll have to update their tables. You can do it with VBA. It's not easy, but you can do it. Uh, I think I covered that in one of the classes. But if you don't make any table changes, then all you have to do is give them the new copy of your front end file. You'll probably have to relink your tables. I got a video for that. That's not hard. You can do that with VBA too. So that when they open the database, if it doesn't find the back end, it'll just say, oh, hey, I see you updated. I can't find your back end files. Please point me to them. And then they'll just have to, you know, it'll open up an Explorer window. You can just pick where their back end file is. Or if you know what it is programmatically, you could set it ahead of time. Okay. The other option is you'd have to have them export their data to a temp file, whether it's another database or even, you know, you could use a text file or whatever. Give them a whole new database and then have them import their data back in. This is a pain. You gotta be careful and make sure all your IDs are the same. You can definitely do it, and I've done it before, right? I had a client that they didn't wanna split database for whatever reason, I forget, but so we just made an import export routine. And again, I've got videos on all this stuff. I'll put links down below. But that's what I would do. I would just give them a new front end file and then you're good to go. Next up, another one of my students, Colin, says that his maths is not working. I love it how only here in the U.S. we call it math and everybody else, you know, around the world, it's maths. I, I get it. Makes sense. Mathematics is plural, but I just never get used to it. I watch a lot of, you know, science and math stuff on YouTube, and I can always tell if someone's from the U.K. or whatever. Maths. <laughs> 
Anyways, Colin's trying to do some maths in a query, and he's getting the enter parameter value. Now, enter parameter value, got a whole separate video on this. I'll put a link to it down below. He's trying to use count of personal ID in the query in which the count of the person personal ID is being calculated. And yes, this I actually realize is a, a typo. He sh this should be count of person ID, not personal ID. Let me see, let me zoom in. Yeah, he's got personal ID. So that is a typo. But, all right, even if you got it spelled right, count of person ID isn't calculated until this query is done running. Okay, so you've got to take that, and you can see here, there's your count of person ID. Okay. And I don't think we got more on the bottom here, but basically you need to take this now, you get these results, then you feed this into another query after this, where you can then count, you know, subtract that from count of referral, because you get both of these, okay? I see what you're trying to do. You wanna put that here too, but you can't, because these aren't calculated until this query is finished. So A, spell your, your fields right, Okay, that's why it's tough if you got personal data and you got person ID. I know, that's, I used to do stuff like that all the time. All right, but you can't do calculations until this query's finished running. So now just take the results of this aggregate query, feed this into another query, and then you can easily do your math there. Okay, Access has to finish this guy first. I see this a lot. This is a common, common question about your maths and your queries. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's head on over to the YouTubes. Bro, how to make a floating table like this and make it easier for matching two tables. I think, bro, you're talking about overlapping windows, which is one of the first things that I teach people how to switch in my Access Beginner class and in my Tech Help Free template, uh, the basic video where I show how I make my database template. If you create a new database or if you use any number of database templates that you find online, the default is this, the tabbed interface, where every object that you open is a new tab. I personally don't like this, I never have. I prefer the classic old school Windows overlapping interface, which looks like this. And then you can open up different objects and you can have them side by side or you can tile them just like Windows is supposed to. That's why they call it Windows. These are little windows, right? But the tabbed interface, you, you can't, no, there's no way to, no, you can't, pull, no. So I don't like that. Want to learn how to change it? Well, go watch this video. I'll put a link down below. Next up is a question that was posted on my Cascading Combo Boxes video. And this user is saying that everything works perfectly if the combo boxes are on a main form. However, if he tries to run them from a sub form, then he gets the enter parameter value pop up. And that's because... You just need to know how to reference the name of an object on a subform. It's slightly different. Fields on a single form, on a standard form, are just simply forms, form name, field name, right? So forms, customer F, customer ID, easy enough. On a subform, it gets a lot more tricky. It's forms, parent form name, the subform name, dot form, and then the field name. So it's be like forms, order form, order detail form, right dot form this is an actual thing you'd have in there right and then the field name it's a little more complicated i didn't make this up i just teach you how it works but you're in luck i got another video where i explain it in detail so go watch this if you have any more questions i think what i'm going to do from now on because usually i go through the the comments in chronological reverse chronological order because that's the way they're displayed on youtube for me but i see there's a bunch more questions going back uh, on this cascading combo boxes one. So let's let's take some time and just go through all of these then. Um, too bad this doesn't work in data sheet view on your form. No, sorry, no. Not much will work on data sheet view. Uh, I don't recommend data sheet view. Uh, you as the developer, if you're gonna go poke around on it, fine. Or I just go straight to the table if that's the case. But I don't like my end users ever having the data sheet view. F uh, form view, that's it. Just single forms, continuous forms. Uh, the Amazing Reviews posted how to make cascading combo boxes work on continuous forms. Well. They do if you know the trick, and I do show you the trick in the extended cut, which you can see is right down here, right? Members learn how to make a cascading combo boxes in a continuous form. 
Now this star here means this person is a member. I don't know if you became a member because you wanted to see how to do this or you were a member before, but either way, I thank you very much. I appreciate all my members who help support my work and it allows me to keep making all of these videos for all of you guys, which I love doing. Next up, Tariq is saying that the VBA code to requery the city combo box doesn't work. It, it should, it's real simple. Make sure you've got the combo box name spelled right. It's just one line of code and it, I've never had it not work before, right? City combo dot requery. Check the name of your box. Make sure it's spelled right. Nine times out of 10, when someone tells me something's not working, it's spelling. Coach Max says he's got two forms, one for athletes, one for parents. Create the parent profile first, then create the athlete profile and connect it using a lookup. Okay. If a child drops, it changes the tuition. Sounds good. I want to create a command in the athlete form that will take me specifically to the athlete's parent profile to handle this rather than opening up the general parent form and searching. Okay, so what I would suggest first of all is if you got two forms, that's a great first start. You wanna do this as a form subform, right? That's the best way to set up a relationship like this. You got your parent form out here and you got your subform in here with all the athletes. And you can do totals on the bottom and see exactly you know what the tuition and stuff should be based on calculating it that way. That's how I would do it. I wouldn't have two separate forms side by side. That makes things difficult. And you got the parent right there, it's easy to find. CC Sprout one says the state is being stored as the ID number rather than the name. Is there a way to get it stored as the actual state name? Yes, you can if you want to. Um, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I prefer using IDs. That's, that's building a proper relational database. Every state, you have a state table and every state's got its own ID. That's the best way to store it. You avoid redundant information in multiple tables because then you got the state listed in the state table and then you got the state listed in the customer table too. All right. And what happens if they change the name of the state? I mean, who knows, right? I mean, the Gulf of Mexico is now the Gulf of America, accordingly to whatever. But you, you don't want to have to have that state name copied in multiple tables. You store it in one table, right? And that's why you have the ID stored everywhere else. Go watch this video on relationships between tables and go watch this video on normalizing data. All right, for example, you got your customers, right? You got Jim Kirk, Will Riker, Mr. Worf, okay? You don't want this information in every single record related to Jim Kirk and his contacts and his orders, right? So you wanna store a customer ID that way you can go back and get his name. That's what normalizing data is all about. All right, that's gonna do it for today, folks. That is your Friday Quick Queries, number 26. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next week for another video, and I'll see you next Friday for another Quick Queries. I like doing that. We're gonna do this every Friday, I like it. A special thank you and shout out to our Diamond sponsors. Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Sammy Shama with Shama Consultancy, a certified Microsoft Access expert who offers personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And Amanda Nicole Consulting, specializing in helping businesses move from complex Excel sheets to an Access database. You'll find links to the Diamond sponsors in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. 
I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.